self-care series video. I'm very excited to talk with you today about something really important to me, which is personal growth and healing ourselves. I really believe that doing the work um, internally, doing that inner personal work is transformational and that we have the power to be able to heal ourselves through that personal work. I do want to kind of preface of what I mean when I talk about personal growth. I think that this term is very much like an umbrella term. A lot of things go into personal growth. It can mean a ton of different things and even just different things to different people. But when I, when I think of personal growth, to me, it means a journey back to ourselves. I think that it's about peeling back the layers of ourselves to find out who we really are at the core. And then once we get to that core, it's building ourselves up in alignment with who we are and the life that we want to live. I want to talk about this type of growth specifically because I think a lot of the time it's not seen. This type of growth, this inner nitty gritty growth is messy and it's hard and it can be painful. So a lot of the time we kind of hide that type of growth from a lot of people. We don't share that. And not that there's anything wrong with not sharing that, but because of it, not a lot of people see it. And I think that this type of growth is so important. It's very meaningful and I believe creates true healing and can really just change your life. It's not about fixing ourselves or wanting to be different than what we are. It's really about recognizing ourselves fully, which means the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly. It's about looking inward and seeing ourselves very clearly. And once we're able to see ourselves clearly, we can start to heal and we can start to work through the things that are holding us back from who we truly are and what we truly want. You know, we can't grow or work on the things that are holding us back if we don't know what those things are. For me, it wasn't until I was finally able to understand why I do the things that I do that it was able to create this space of compassion where I was really able to work through my shit. And I think that that's applicable to everyone. So if we don't know why we're doing something, we're not really gonna be able to effectively do it. So being able to fully understand ourselves is only going to help us through that growth journey and heal. And it's really important work. You know, uh, to give you kind of an example of what I mean is I am, I've always been <laughs> uh, a self-sabotager. I self-sabotaged, I think, every romantic relationship I have ever been in with the exception of my current one. <laughs> and I was stuck in this cycle for so many years because I didn't realize what I was doing. And it wasn't until I looked at myself clearly and 
the actions that I was doing till I was able to really kind of see that I was doing it to myself, that really all of this stemmed from this core wound that I have of unworthiness and fear of not being enough that I was never willing to let anyone in. And because of that, I was choosing people that I knew that I would never want to let in. So I was stuck in this cycle and it wasn't until I was able to see that very clearly that I was able to break out of that cycle and choose differently. And that's where the healing is, is once we're able to see ourselves and understand why we're doing a certain something, we're able then to kind of break free out of that container that we've been stuck in and do something different. Even if we don't do something different that time, still that clarity of understanding yourself better innately will propel you forward. Trying to like find these <laughs> sore spots and the things that you need to work on can be hard. And for me, where I kind of started on this journey is looking at my triggers. So what are you triggered by on a regular basis? You know, I'm not here to say that every single trigger means something because that's not true, but what are the things that create this reaction in your body when they happen continually? And once you identify those things, really digging in on that, you know, what are the underlying emotions that you're feeling? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling scared? Are you angry? And then after you've kind of identified what those feelings are, take it another step down. And what are times in your past that you felt this, those same emotions? And odds are the situation that like had just happened that you are looking at in a different light has happened multiple other times in your life. And that is where it's stemming from. I like to use this um, example that my partner is probably not going to appreciate. <laughs> But, you know, when we first moved in together, it was, you know, a transition. Like any, any person, any people that are combining their lives into one house, it, it has an adjustment period. And while we were in that adjustment period, you know, I was struggling a little bit of, you know, just not changing the coffee out or leaving the laundry in the, um, in the washer when I had to do laundry and I was taking all of these things so personally, but making it about him and that, why is he doing this? I would get so upset about it. I'd be talking about it to my therapist and getting all worked up all over again. And she asked me that she's like, I want you to, I need to, every time you're triggered, I want you to really think about what emotions you're feeling when you're triggered and how that's really making you feel. Are there times in your past that you've also felt like that? And when I really took the time to dig into that, I realized that it was just coming from me feeling like I wasn't respected, that I wasn't being taken care of and it was about me like <laughs> it wasn't about him at all like none of those things were true of he was not doing those things to hurt me or to have an intention other than he was just doing 
his own thing. He was living his life and I was internalizing it and taking it personally and it was negatively affecting myself and our relationship. When I kind of had this light bulb moment, I told this to my therapist. I said, I'm the problem. And they laughed and was like, great, because we can work on that. <laughs> It, a weight kind of came up off of my shoulders with that realization of, you know, we can't change other people, but we can change ourselves. And we can do it with the help of those around us, showing this mirror of where we need to heal and where our sore spots are. And it has been transformational for me, to be honest with you, of being able to use my now relationship to help heal the things that I have not been able to do on my own. And that's not to say that there aren't plenty of things that we can work on and heal on our own. We don't need uh, other people to necessarily show a mirror at every single thing, but it's simple things like that, that just in our everyday interactions, other people can show us, can help show us where maybe we need some work. And for me, that was the most helpful start of the journey is by being able to look at those different ways that people are mirroring back at me on the things that I needed and wanted to work on. So I want you to get to know your sore spots. Do the work, go deep down and find out who you are and who you want to be. And then do the work. Becoming more of yourself is the greatest growth and healing you can accomplish. It's of course transformational for your life, but it can also improve the lives of others. One of the things that I would like to also talk about is grief and growth. So as we do this inner work and start to heal, we change, which is wonderful. Being able to continue to move forward and grow and heal is a wonderful journey. But I want to acknowledge that there is also grief in who we used to be. I think that I have grieved every past version of myself and it's okay to do that. We can be sad for who we used to be, but still be looking forward and be excited of the journey that we're on. But I really wanted to say that and to give you permission that you're allowed to grieve and be sad of who you used to be. And that doesn't mean that you're doing the wrong thing or that you're not growing the way you should. It, it just means that you're human. And it just means that you need to love yourself a little bit more and give yourself a little more grace when you are feeling the, that way as you are on this growth journey. And like I said at the beginning, you know, growth is messy and it's hard and it can be painful, but it's also beautiful and it's humbling and it's healing. And so my hope really out of this is that we all can start or continue to look inside and do that personal growth that's needed to open us up to the world as our truest selves the best versions of ourselves, which is your most authentic self. And we can heal ourselves and show others that they can too. So thank you so much for listening to me and I am very excited to share this video with you and hear your thoughts and have you share some of your growth journey. So thank you so much and until next time. Thank you.